This final question, so we're getting on to the very final topic, which is reproduction or 6.6. .6. And this first question, when I look at it, I'm just like, oh, I start freaking out, like ethical issues associated with IVF. And I usually hate ethical issues, but I've come up with like a way to, um, well, not really come up with a way, but when you think about it, it's not actually that, that bad. And the reason why is that um, if you have, yeah, the reason why is that you can talk about the pros and the cons, and that means that you only, only need about three points each in order to get maximum marks. Let's talk about the pros first. So the pros first. So what is a good thing about IVF? Well, it allows um, couples who might not be able, who can't reproduce naturally, to have children. The next thing that we need to talk about is the fact that um, children from IVF, like couples who t undertake IVF, they have to go undergo a lot of effort to get there. So the fact that they're going to do that through the very hard process means they really want that child. So. They undergo a lot of distress, so child would be looked after. And I guess the next point that we can talk about is somewhat controversial, but um, the fact that you can, if you have multiple embryos which you can put into the, the mother, then you can select for ones which don't have any genetic diseases. And I think finally, along the same lines of embryos and things like that, is that obviously you only want one embryo or one like baby growing up, usually anyway. And those additional embryos that can be used for research or other kind of uh, stem cell therapy in the future. Addition, so additional non-used embryos can be used for research. or stem cell therapy. Okay, good. Now, what's the cons? The cons are very straightforward as well. Um, but the first thing that you can always talk about is the fact that um, it's unnatural. It's an unnatural process. Um, and the second thing is that it's a ex very expensive process as well. I believe it's like um, in the region of tens of thousands of dollars to get this procedure done. So expensive. So maybe limited to rich couples. And after that, um, what else could you talk about? Uh, you could talk about that, um, it's kind of similar to this point up here actually, that even if you select for embryos which don't have genetic diseases, you could take that a step further and select for, uh, select for embryos which are um, you know, only blonde or only good looking and things like that. And that's very, you know, that might be going out of control for some people. Human selection of embryos is murder. So you can talk about that, it's um, murder. So if you kill off those embryos, then those embryos could have been children and babies and adults eventually. So if you kill those off, then you're killing a person, aren't you? So it really depends. Um, and finally, I guess, is that it's got a very low rate of success. Rate of success. So made, it may distress people. So may, so may distress. Distress uh, couples for no reason. 
Okay. So there you go, you've got a handful of different points there. You've got four here, you've got four here, and the maximum mark is six. So, you know, um, you definitely get four marks if you wrote these ones down. Obviously you want to expand on these um, points and my, the idea of me doing these questions isn't, you know, the perfect idea of uh, what you should write in the exam, but it's definitely like a framework that you can use. Okay, so now the next question is a draw a diagram one, which I love. Um, and the trick I've found with the adult female reproductive system is you have to draw the one with the, with them front on. So if I'm here, then you want to draw from this way. You don't want to draw the side on view. The side on view is so difficult. So the first thing that you can draw is the, um, the uterus. Okay, so that's the uterus. And the uterus has fallopian tubes on either side. And this is the reason why it's a lot easier to draw, because it's symmetrical, so you know where to draw everything. So I've got these things on the side, and they're the ovaries. And then from the uterus, you've also got the, the uterine lining as well, which I'm going to draw in red. Uh, it'd be nice if you could color code it in the exam, but I guess you don't have to. And then from the uterus, um, then you've got the uh, constriction, which is the known as the cervix. Right there. Okay, so you've got the cervix right there. And then as that comes out, you've got the vagina. Okay, so let's label those different ones. So we've got fallopian tube. You've got uh, ovary. Um, you've got uh, uterus, as well as the endothelial lining. And you've got the vagina, as well as the cervix. And I think a few things that you need to know which are important are that the uterus, the walls of the uterus have to be very thick to show that um, it's very muscular. And it's got to be much thicker than, say, the fallopian tube. The size does matter. Um, and as well as the cervix, the cervix is, so if we had like a closer look there, then what you'd see is it's like the, the walls of the uterus like this. And then you'd see the, um, you'd see the cervix looking somewhat like this. Um, it's kind of like, Kind of like this. So it kind of just dips down. So it's like a constriction. It's a constriction. So this is the cervix. Okay. Yeah. So if we count up how many points, we've got uh, one point here, uh, one point here, three, four, five, six. So we've got a maximum of six points, but this is a short question. So we've got six out of four. Lovely question. If you can get this question in the exam, draw a very simple diagram like that, you'll do well. There are plenty more YouTube videos for you to check out, just click on the links below. If you'd like to download the questions, as well as the answers, make sure to like us on Facebook first. And finally, if you'd like to find out how I got a 7 in high-level IB Biology, make sure to check out our website in the bottom right-hand corner. Thanks.